Hi everyone, my name is Nick Greenfield and I'm a senior program manager at Microsoft working on the Dapper project. I'm also one of the Dapper maintainers of the documentation repo. Today, I'm going to talk to you about Dapper. We'll cover what it is, how it works, and I'll demonstrate how Dapper enables portability in your microservice applications. I'll also show you how you can use the new AKS Dapper extension as a way of provisioning Dapper on your AKS clusters. Let's first get started by taking a look at what Dapper is and what it offers developers who are building distributed applications. Dapper stands for Distributed Application Runtime, and it's an open source project that's part of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. It's a project that's aimed at offering developers with a set of building block APIs that ease implementation of common patterns found in distributed applications, at the same time addressing the complexities that are often encountered when implementing those patterns. The Dapper APIs are available through sidecar processes that run in tandem with your applications. As long as your applications leverage HTTP or gRPC protocols, you can call the Dapper APIs. These APIs provide generic abstractions over the underlying tech that your applications integrate with. For example, if your app is leveraging PubSub for message passing, your app only needs to know how to communicate with the Dapper sidecar via the generic PubSub API. And it's up to the Dapper sidecar to know how to integrate and communicate with the PubSub message broker of your choice. So whether that's Kafka, Redis, RapidMQ, Azure Service Bus, or any of the other supported PubSub message brokers. These integrations are configured through a YAML file called components that's passed to the Dapper sidecar when it starts alongside your application. You can easily swap out and exchange these components for other components without having to modify any of your application code. This removes the requirement of having to take dependencies on cloud-specific SDKs or libraries. Additionally, the Dapper APIs have industry best practices built in. For example, how your application handles security between service to service calls or your application's ability to detect, mitigate, and respond to failures. Dapper has security, resiliency, and reliability built in. Lastly, Dapper is incrementally adoptable. These APIs can be used as the need arises. You can use one, several, or all of them to develop your applications faster. At the end of the day, the Dapper APIs help developers keep their microservice code simple, portable, resilient, and secure. Now let's take a look at one of the Dapper sample applications that I have running locally on my dev machine and deploy it to an AKS cluster running up in Azure. During the deployment, I'll demonstrate the process of swapping out lighter weight components that I use when developing locally for cloud services that are more appropriate for this type of app that I'm building. I'll then use the AKS Dapper extension to easily provision Dapper on my AKS cluster with some smart default configurations. I'll accomplish all of this without having to make any application code changes. But before we jump into the deployment, it's worth spending some time on the sample application and how it's leveraging Dapper. This is the Dapper Twitter sentiment sample application that I have running natively on my development workstation. You can find this exact example in the Dapper samples repository on GitHub. The purpose of this application is to run a sentiment analysis on newly published tweets that contain a particular keyword. These little emojis here on each individual tweet show the results from the sentiment scoring. Smiling emojis mean the sentiment of the tweet is positive, sad or angry means there's a negative sentiment, and so on. In this example, we are running a sentiment analysis on new tweets that contain the keyword Dapper Dev. So let's give this a try by tweeting with the keyword Dapper Dev. All right, so as you can see, my tweet was pulled into our application via a Dapper input binding, and you can see the results in the sentiment scoring. Let's take a look at the architecture of this application and how it's leveraging the various Dapper APIs. This application is made up of three microservices. The Twitter provider, which handles the incoming tweets, the sentiment processor, which connects to an Azure cognitive service and is able to analyze the sentiment of a tweet, and the front-end tweet viewer, which is where the tweets are being streamed in live. Each of these services is accompanied by a Dapper sidecar where you can see the different Dapper APIs that are being used. 
First is the Twitter input binding, which is responsible for bringing in the tweets that contain the keyword Dapper Dev. Then the provider service is using Dapper service invocation to call the processor service to have the tweet sentiment scored. Once the tweet is scored, it's persisted into a local Redis instance via the state API. And lastly, the tweet is published as a message to Redis where the front end viewer service is subscribed and is showing the tweets come in real time. Now I want to demonstrate to you how easy it is to take this application that I have running natively on my development workstation and deploy it to an AKS cluster while swapping out the components that I use when developing locally for cloud services such as Azure Service Bus and Azure Storage, and how I can accomplish this without making any application code changes. One of the first things that's needed, assuming you have an AKS cluster already provisioned and ready for deployment, is to add the necessary Dapper annotations to your Kubernetes deployments. In this example, I have the deployment YAML for the processor service, and I've added the Dapper annotations to ensure that a Dapper sidecar is injected alongside my processor service. I'm also providing a unique app ID for this service. This is how the Dapper sidecars know how to communicate with each other. Each of the three services will need similar annotations. The next step is to switch out components. As mentioned earlier, I plan to leverage the existing Azure services that I've already provisioned. To demonstrate this, let's look at the PubSub component file. This is where I'll switch out the component that I use when developing locally with a more appropriate service for the deployed environment, for example, Azure Service Bus. We're going to switch out the component type from Redis to Azure Service Bus and add the necessary connection details to that instance as metadata. Notice that the name of the component doesn't change. It's still tweet PubSub. That's because our application references these components by their name, as shown in this example. We instantiate the Dapper client, and we use the publish event async method while passing in the name of the component, the topic, and the event data. This is one of the key elements to Dapper that helps ensure that our code is portable and agnostic to the technologies that it integrates with. Once our application is ready for deployment, we need to provision Dapper on our AKS cluster. We'll do this by using the AKS Dapper extension, which is currently in public preview. The Dapper extension is the easiest way to install Dapper on an AKS cluster, as no specific Dapper tooling is required, just the Azure CLI. With the extension, you have the option of opting into automatic upgrades where you can offload versioning of the Dapper runtime. Additionally, the extension supports all native Dapper configurations as command line parameters. Lastly, the Dapper extension is an extension of AKS, therefore you can expect the same support policies as other AKS features. So let's use the extension to install Dapper on our cluster and deploy our sample application. Let's use the Azure CLI to install Dapper on our bare cluster. So I'm pasting in the CLI command to create the Dapper extension. This process usually takes a minute or two, so we'll come back to it as soon as it's completed. Great, the extension was added and Dapper has been successfully installed on our AKS cluster. If we inspect the Dapper system namespace, we can see that the Dapper control plane resource have been created. The extension installs Dapper with some smart defaults to ensure availability. Here, we can see that Dapper was installed with high availability and mode enabled. Now that Dapper is installed, it's time for us to deploy our application. Once the deployment is successful, we will confirm the application is functional and that our components have been swapped out for the Azure services we've specified in our component YAML files. So let's run a script that uses Helm to deploy our application. Perfect, our application is deployed and is running in our AKS cluster. Let's navigate to the public IP of our app and test the functionality to ensure everything works as expected. Okay, so here's our application running in AKS by hitting our public IP. And if I tweet deploying Dapper Dev applications, Awesome, I can see that the tweet is showing up and the sentiment has been scored. Now let's confirm that the correct components are being used. One way to do this is to use the Dapper dashboard. 
So here we can see the three services that we've deployed. And if we go to the components tab, we can see that our PubSub component is now leveraging Azure Service Bus and our Tweet Store is now using Azure Table Storage. To recap, we learned what Dapper is and what it offers developers who are building distributed applications. We took a look at a sample application that leverages multiple Dapper building block APIs, and we walked through the necessary steps to deploy that sample from a local environment to a deployed environment while switching out development components for cloud components. We were able to accomplish this without having to change any application code, just configuration. We also used the AKS Dapper extension to provision Dapper on our AKS cluster. I encourage you to take what you learned here today and try it on your own. The Dapper project has many comprehensive quick starts and samples for you to try. You can also find more information regarding Dapper on AKS, as well as quick starts that get you hands-on with the Dapper extension. Thanks for tuning in and see you in the next one.